welcome you today to Disciples Net Church. If this is the first time you have visited with us, welcome. We hope that you feel God's presence among us as we worship together. If you are a longtime part of Disciples Net and count yourself one of the family, we welcome you as well. And we are delighted to have each and every one of you to join with us today. We worship today with a thought about difficulty. We worship today with a thought about dealing with hard times in a world that is not always as friendly as we wish for those of us who want to follow our God. Again, we hope that you feel God's presence among us as we worship today. Welcome and God bless. I invite you to join me now in prayer. Gracious God, we come before you giving thanks that we can come to you in times of trouble, in times of ease, in all times, and that you hear us. In this moment, we come to you as your people, separated by great distances and times and situations in life, but uniting together here. We humbly ask that your light shine from our lives, no matter where we are and what is going on. 
We put together in this moment our love for you, our Lord and our God. We thank you for the wonders of this world, but especially for the wonder that you care for us, each and us all, and that you want to be part of our lives, in good and in bad, and that in you we have the gift of eternal life. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit into our lives to remind us of these things and to accompany us through life. Gracious God, this week we've experienced loss of those dear to us, some of them saintly people whose lives were lives of devotion to you. We give thanks for their faithfulness and their examples. Even as we think of these people that we have known in our own lives, we also include thanks for those in the minds of the others who are listening here. Dear God, also coming to mind are those who have great troubles, including those listening here and the ones we love. For some it is illness, abilities failing. Some are facing the ends of their lives on earth. For some it is personal tragedy, loss, broken relationships, grief, and pain. For some it is disappointment, shame, betrayal, confusion, anger, depression, persecution, refugees, and have uncertain futures. For some, the pain in life may seem so desperate that there seems no way out and wonder how to go on. Dear God, in times of trouble it can be so hard to be brave, to have courage, to have hope, and to continue to go on living and living as your people. We pray today for your strength. And as we bring to our mind's eye images of those in need, whether it's ourselves, people in our lives that we know, your children we hear of across the world, and those who are forgotten or unknown except to you, we pray for your healing spirit to be with those in need, to enfold them mightily in your love and strength to go on in the reassurance that you are with them no matter what happens. We thank you that you have been with each of us since before we were born and will be with us for all eternity. Please help us to grow in wisdom that the evil and suffering on earth will not endure. But your love for us as your children will be with us for all eternity. Your love will never leave us alone we give thanks. Gracious God, the world continues to struggle with good and evil, and it is confusing when people take up sides and see themselves as good and the other as evil. We see this between countries and faiths, ruling leaders, churches, communities, cultures, families, neighbors, and even within our own life. Please help us to show us the richness that can be in difference because, dear God, you gave us this wonderful tapestry of people on earth. Please help to show us the great works we can do when we work together. Please help us not to rush to call someone evil just because they are different from us and our ways and our thoughts, or because our changing times have a way of stripping away our comfort, our safe places we know. Please help us as we learn new things in each new day and find our safe place in your love and in your grace that we can bring into each new day with us. We know there is true evil in this world. Give us vision to see this evil because often it comes masked and deceiving. In the name of your Son, Jesus, may we see and work against what is wrong and evil, even when it may creep into our own lives or come very near. We pray that you be with our world leaders to help them work for what is right and for the good of all people. Gracious God, we thank you for hearing this humble prayer, for the gift of each one listening here and especially now for the gift of Jesus, your Son, who came into this world to teach us about you 
and taught us this prayer that we say in closing together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, Trying to walk in the steps of the Savior Trying to follow whatever life brings Shaping our lives to Christ's blessed example Happy, how happy the songs that we sing How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior Stepping in the light Stepping in the light, how beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, led in paths of light. Pressing more closely as Jesus is leading, when we are tempted to turn from the way. Trusting the arm that is strong to defend us Happy, how happy our praises each day How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior Stepping in the light, stepping in the light How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior Led in paths of light Walking in footsteps of gentle forbearance, footsteps of faithfulness, mercy, and love. Looking to Christ for the grace freely promised, happy, how happy our journey above. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, led in paths of light. As a preacher, I must confess that there are times when I come to read the lesson for the day with some fear and trembling. Take, for example, the account of Abraham almost sacrificing Isaac. On other days, like today, it's a joy to read the lesson. 2 Corinthians 4, 5 through 12 comes at a very challenging time in the life of Paul. His second letter to the Corinthians answers the challenges to his authority as an apostle and the tough questions about the persecution of the church. Yet in the midst of this challenge, Paul presents this gift of hope. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. There is no shying from the truth in this account. While many Christians are not facing the affliction Paul details in the text right now, there are Christians in our world who are being persecuted and even put to death. 
there is darkness in this world. But the same God who spoke light into the darkness to create everything that is, is the same God who shines that same light in our hearts. In the face of all the world can throw against us, God still has the power to carry us on. It is not easy to accept the jars of clay truth about our human existence. The world is still largely deceived into thinking that we have to stand on our own, that the power to face this world comes from our determination, that all we need is forward momentum, keep on keeping on. In the world, we put on a brave face, and when asked, we say, we're fine, yet we know, deep down, we're not fine. No matter how many gifts and abilities we have, our knowledge and our insight are limited to our time and place in history, to the limits of our intellect and the imagination that we have, to the shallowness of our hopes and our dreams. We are all, every one of us, subject to selfish impulses, riddled with personal quirks, and easily misled by the delusions that our pride creates, as well as by the opinion of others. Some of us mistakenly think that we are less worthy than we actually are, and others of us are convinced that we are far more worthy than we really are. Yet, there is something good in the worst of us, and there is something wrong in even the best of us. It is said a saint is someone whose life has not been sufficiently researched. I would also say that a sinner is someone whose life has not been sufficiently valued. There is not a single living being who does not need the grace of Christ to make him or her whole. Paul cuts through all of this. He wants his readers to know that they aren't standing on their own. The power to live in adversity does not come from our own well. We are humble, earthly vessels of clay. And the extraordinary power that shines out from us comes from God. The light of creation recreates, restores, reanimates our clay, even when it's cracked and bruised by the evil in this world. We, in and of ourselves, are only clay. Or, in the words of the ancient Ash Wednesday reading, we are only dust. That's not bad news. It's simply the truth. It's the only truth that will allow us to be free and human in the way that God intended. Here is the truth. From dust we came, to dust we will return. And in the time that we are on this earth, we are like a piece of pottery. We all have our little imperfections. In addition, we have the cracks and the chips that come from being in this world. And yet, even in all of that, we can be used to carry the greatest power that this world will ever know. The power of God. The power of God's love shining out from us even, no, especially through those cracks. As we live this life of being pressed on from every side, it is only through letting the light of God shining out from us that we can see our way through. As we face the worst that this world has, the only way to stand is with the power God graciously places in us. This is not just the best way. It is the only way. And within the church is one place where we're likely to hear this truth. Here we can speak the truth that we are indeed hard-pressed. We can also testify to the truth that we are not done in, thanks to the grace of God. Within the church, we can truthfully say that our lives have their share of trouble. But we can also state truly that our lives and their troubles will not get the best of us by the grace of God. The power behind all that is God, who makes the light shine in those dark places and dares to place the greatest treasure of all in these earthly vessels. Amen. See
There's a song I like called Simple Gifts. And it reminds me that the best things are not the most complex things. And this morning we heard Pastor Russ talk about clay vessels, that we ourselves are very simple things. Yet, the light of God shines through us. We have literally clay vessels in front of us today and it's interesting that Jesus, when he wanted to leave a final lesson with his disciples, he chose the simplest of things. Some bread, some wine, a cup that was made of clay in all likelihood. And yet, and yet, out of those simple things comes this wonderful remembrance. In the bread, we see a broken body, in the wine, we see blood poured out, and in all, we see amazing grace offered for us. And so, every time we come together, we celebrate this. So now, I invite you to gather your elements in your mind or in reality and join us today. Let us pray. God, as we approach this table, as we approach these simple gifts, Enter our hearts and let the gifts symbolically and in reality transform us so that once again we are reminded through these gifts we are given the gift to shine to the whole world. We give thanks for you and all that you have given us. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we know on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and when he had blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. And in the same way, he took a cup. And said, This cup is the covenant 
in my blood poured out for you. Take it and remember me. And so now all is in readiness. Come. Friends, remember that the very light of creation, the power of God, dwells within you by the grace of God. As cracked and as bruised as you are by this world, remember that God's extraordinary power is the light that still shines out from you. Go into your world bearing that light. To the poor, the outcast, the stranger, the forgotten, all children of God, as you are. Go and show them the face of Christ in your own. Amen. Looking to Christ for the grace freely promised, happy, how happy our journey above. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, letting